Hope you're enjoying my channel. Why don't you let me know what you want to learn about in the comments and then I'll try and get whoever you ask for on the show as well to do a live Q&A. Anyway, back to today's lesson. Forensic anthropology looks at bones to determine a whole host of identifying features. Now today we're going to look at the human skull and what it can tell us. Now, skulls are commonly categorised into three basic groups, European, Asian and African. And although the methods for determining origin are not 100% accurate, and many skulls can be a combination of ethnicities, they are useful for getting a general idea of race and origin. Now, the skull is made up of 22 bones, eight larger bones that are designed to protect the brain, called the cranium, and 14 bones that make up the facial structure. The mandible, jaw, is the only part of the skull that moves and can get detached when a body de decomposes, meaning that forensic scientists need to look to the other bones in the face to determine race and sex. Now, things that are looked at are length and width of the skull, shape of the eye, size and shape of the nasal opening, shape and slope of the nasal bone, and general slope of the skull from forehead to chin. Now, these are all important in determining race. Now, back to our three types. European skulls, sometimes referred to by the scientific terms Caucasoid or Caucasian, are relatively long and narrow. They have less pronounced cheekbones and exhibit elongated chins. Nasal openings are triangular shaped with a more pronounced nasal bridge. The eye orbits are rectangular in shape and somewhat sloped. The teeth are small and set closely together. Asian skulls, also called mongoloid, tend to be shorter and broader. The cheekbones are wide, flare out to the side of the skull and are forward sloping. The eye orbits are rounded, the upper incisors tend to be more shovel shaped and the nasal opening wider than the European skull. African skulls, sometimes referred to as negroid, are longer from front to back and have more of a forward slope from forehead to chin. The slope causes a protrusion of the jaw also referred to as prognathism. The eye orbits are rectangular and spaced farther apart with a wider nasal bridge, which is less pronounced than the others. The nasal openings also broader, the teeth are larger and show wider spacing than skulls from other races. Now, as I said right at the beginning of this, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's all the skulls are. There are a lot of different ethnicities, but they're the basic things that most forensic anthropologists look for when they're looking at a skull. But there's also a difference between male and female skulls. When identifying the sex of a skull, a single characteristic isn't used, it's rather a number of factors, and they're used collectively to determine the sex of human remains. Generally, males have thicker bones <laughs> compared to women, and when viewed in profile, female skulls have a rounded forehead, whereas male frontal bones are less rounded and slope backwards at a gentler angle. Now, this ridge along the brow, the supraorbital ridge, is prominent in males and it's much smoother in females. Don't look too close there, you'll see my wrinkles. Uh, females have rounder eye sockets and pointed jaws. Men mostly have squarer sockets and jaws. Now, determining who a skull was is a real skill and can be super challenging. And that's why people are super experts in it. Obviously, we've already talked to one forensic anthropologist, but happy to talk to more. So there you go, human skull basics. It's 101, really. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel, Bedroom Forensics. And if you want to learn more, as I said at the beginning, then please get in contact. If you want to hear from a, a, a specific expert, then I'm happy to reach out to them as well and get them on the show. So why not subscribe and also keep on watching.